Hello, welcome back and welcome to your first virtual physical oceanography lecture. We are about to jump into the North Atlantic Gyre. The North Atlantic Gyre is the, one of the most studied gyres in the world and it, it, it occurs in the North Atlantic. So right here for reference, we have the United States and along here is the Atlantic. So along the Atlantic, the first thing that, that, that was ever studied and was noticed by many explorers was the Gulf Stream. The Gulf Stream, which goes from the Gulf of Mexico up along the eastern coast of the United States is a very strong current and has been known to sailors for a very long time, going back to Ponce de Leon in the 1500s. Then it was looked into much more strongly by William Gerard de Brom um, in, this, in the 1700s. And then in a video that you will see much more detail of very soon, it was looked into by none other than Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin, who spoke, who was the um, postmaster general at the time of the new colonies and wanted to look into why some uh, ships were taking longer to get to the eastern seaboard than others from, the, from, uh, from London, uh, was talking to his cousin, the whaler, Timothy Folger. who was telling him about this very strong current that they would use to help them chase, uh, chase the whales. Now, Benjamin Franklin thought about this, and he thought that the source of, this, of the Gulf Stream was most likely due to the fact that there were very strong perpetual winds, the trade winds, that were always blowing from east to west in a, in a um, southwesterly direction. And these trade winds were used by sailors when they were coming across from Europe to the Americas. He believed that the trade winds were actually piling up waters down along the coast of South America, and that because the water got piled up, there was a higher pressure gradient here, and so the waters then would move upward into the Gulf of Mexico, and then through the Straits of Florida, and formed the Gulf Stream. Another explorer who, put, who did a lot of work on the Gulf Stream was James Rennell. James Rennell agreed with Benjamin Franklin that the trade winds were in fact the source of the Gulf Stream and that it was due to the winds piling up the water and creating this high pressure gradient force that then would push the waters in this direction. He called this a stream current. Now, another person who did a lot of work in oceanography and has really helped to develop many oceanographic charts that we use today um, was Maori. Matthew Fontaine Maori. And Maori did not agree with Rennell and Franklin. He thought that there's no way that the winds were strong enough to be the only reason that we had the Gulf Stream. And his reasoning was this. Well, if here in the Straits of Florida, 
The same volume is transported through the Straits of Florida that then passes by Cape Hatteras. And he knew that the Gulf Stream was narrower in the Straits of Florida and it became wider in Cape Hatteras. Therefore, he reasoned, Cape Hatteras must have a shallower seafloor than the, than the seafloor is in the Straits of Florida. So that means that the water is, that the seafloor is deeper in the Straits of Florida than it is in, at Cape Hatteras. And therefore, in his mind, the water had to go uphill because he was thinking about the seafloor and the fact that the water had to go up the seafloor. We know that this is not true because we have studied the fact that, that it is a pressure gradient force that is determined not by the sea floor, but in fact by the sea surface height, or even more specifically, by the isopicules. And that's what gives us our pressure gradient force and allows us to have the Gulf Stream. All right, the next video I want you to watch is a much nicer video on YouTube, looking specifically at Benjamin Franklin's discovery of the Gulf Stream and the chart that he drew, which is still accurate today.